Well, look at here. Guess who's number one in the Nielsen ratings again? All right, folks, we're back with you, and I am honored to have one of the greatest songwriters of all time, Mr. Paul Overstreet. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Doing great. Man, I'll tell glad you. To on, glad to be on here with you guys. Hey, I appreciate it, man. I know you're absolutely busy, and every time I, you know, I, I talk to your wife, she's like, well, he's doing this, he's doing that, but anyway, we got it, uh, got it going. I got her fooled. I, I, I she thinks I'm working all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do the same thing. I can take a little job and make it last all day long. Yeah, absolutely. If it's one I like. You know, I got to ask a question, man. And, and, you know, you wrote the song, She Thinks My Tractor's Sexy. And uh, yeah. I was actually, the other day I was talking to her, and she said you was actually out on your tractor. How can you own a tractor and write it about it being sexy? Anybody that's rode on a tractor know there's absolutely nothing sexy about a tractor. Uh, actually, when you get a brand new one, yeah, and uh, it's got a cab on it, it's got a CD player. Oh, okay, I see. It's got, a, it's got radio. It's got air conditioning. Heat. It's a, oh, okay. I, it's pretty badass. Yeah, I, I was gonna say. You know, I want to correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, but I think that John Deere, when you go out and you buy these seven hundred thousand dollar combines and all these big expensive tractors and things, they actually fly you to the factory and they give you like a gold key. I want to say there's a whole factory presentation involved with that. So that'd be very sexy. Yeah, that would be. I I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you one thing. I watched the video and the girl that I know that thinks a tractor sexy. She she don't look nothing like the girl in the video. Honestly, she looks nothing like. She's a, one of them big bone girls we like to say down here in the south. But uh, oh, is she? Which which video are you talking about? With the uh, the Kenny Chesney with the she. Oh yeah, about. the girl on the front of the tractor. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Man, you She's have her own butt. You are absolutely, and I have listened to you. I can remember seeing you live. I don't know if you remember concerts in the country back years ago. Of course, it's long gone, but I can remember seeing the first time I ever saw you live, and uh, I fell in love with your stuff and the music and the career that you've had writing songs. I mean, gosh, just one. I mean, I, if we sit here and name the songs that you wrote over the years, uh, it'd take us all all, all day long. How, do, how in the world do you do that? I know that's a crazy question, but, I mean, honestly, it's just like, I mean, it's amazing. I, you know, I think part of it is just getting your brain in that groove. Um, if you get your brain in the groove of writing, you think about it all the time. You know, you're always, and you know how everywhere you go, like if you're a songwriter or something, everywhere you go, you got people telling you, hey, hey, I got a great song idea. Right. And because everybody really can have a great song idea, the, the craft of writing it and finishing it up and making it really, special and that's a that is definitely a craft and art and it takes a, a long time to get there uh i remember when i was writing for publishing companies and the guy would go you're just scratching the surface and i'd be i didn't want to hear that because i was working really hard right but you know they would tell you that and and he was right you know i was just getting i was just starting to get used to If you you can get out of that mode, but you chord, I think, causes you to write more as well than you normally would. I mean, if you're lucky, I mean, you'd have like a Jimmy Buffett, you know, Margaritaville, and that's that builds a whole career, you know. And some people have one hit, and it's and it's a big career. So how many, I mean, but you've had, golly, I mean, hit after hit after hit, my father and me. I mean, I, that, that's, a. I mean, the songs that you've had. How many hits have you had? Uh, don't give me the line. Oh, that's a good <laughs> problem to have if you can't figure out how many you had, you know. Yeah, Just read no, online. Had, it says 27 top 10 hits. Yeah, I've had, I've had some good hits, and I've, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. I love every artist that's recorded my songs and, I've been real fortunate. A lot of them, you know, a lot of times, you know, you, I don't know if you ever heard the saying, the demo is better. Right. A lot of people say that about, they, they think the demo is better than the record. But in my case, I've had, the records have been, the good records have been better than the demo. Mm -hmm. Tell me this. Here's a question I've always had. When a songwriter, when a singer, when they, when they produce a song, they record that song, when you hear that, that finished product, 
and 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 you think back on some of your greats that you, that you've had, and you've had so many of them. Did you know when you heard that finished product that hey, this is it, this is going to be a hit, or is it one of those things that you just realize after the fact when you see the sales? Did you did you have an innate instinct for it being awesome ahead of time, or did you just not know? Was it just like everything else, and it just happened to be something that became a hit? Uh, you know, I think I think with your with your experience and knowledge of the industry and the and the songs and things, you, sometimes you know when you finish a song, you go, you know, I I just I don't think we could do any more to that song to make it better until it's complete. Right. Uh, that's a good thing. And then you, but when you hear the first record, like Forever and Ever Amen was going up the charts like so fast. And I was kind of in a confused state about it. I was like, I don't know why, mm -hmm. but everybody just seemed to like that song. And they loved it and they loved the artist. And it was that marriage between Randy Travis and that and that special song. It's a fabulous song. I grew up listening yeah. to that in high school. I've got that on tape, that song. Yeah, and I sang the backgrounds on that song. Oh, which wow. Was, which was, uh, I, I didn't intend to do all of them, but Paul Davis went out with me to the Kyle Lanning studio to do backgrounds. And Paul went out and he found a fishing rod and went out and started fishing out in the pond behind the studio. And he's left me in there to do them all. Wow. And it was a lot, it was, it was hard work. But if you listen to those backgrounds, that's me back there. Do you know, I don't know, you know, to me, I, I'm not a big fan of the new pop country they call it it's not relatable but that's the thing about the old stuff that we grew up with uh, like your stuff and of course alan jackson all that it's relatable to ever ever the old everyday person that's out there working from day to day i mean you know and i think that's the big deal with your music and a lot of music like that and are you finding it hard now nowadays with the pop country having uh songs cut well i think it's about sounds more than it is about songs like I remember when, um, you know, late eighties, nineties, I mean, we were all kind of a, all the songwriters in Nashville, we were all kind of like a, a, a social, we all knew each other. We all hung out and we all cared about each other's songs. And so every week we were listening to the radio because we knew there was going to be a song out there that these writers were going to show us something right. different. And it was, it was not, it, if it was a competition, it was definitely a friendly competition. And we admired, like, when I heard Old School come out, that song, I just, I thought that was like one of the coolest songs ever. Mm -hmm. You know, and you'd hear Dave Loggins' song, and you go, dang, Dave killed it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we appreciated everybody's songs, but every song, it was a, it was definitely a song world back then. It was like, let's get the best song out there. Right. And then I remember one time when a record executive, I believe it was Tony Brown, said, we're not cutting and we're not putting out the best songs anymore. And I was like, why? I was just kind of like the dog, you know, RCA dog. <laughs> I was confused. He goes, I don't know. It's just we're putting out, we're putting out songs. That I, you know, some of them were not really great songs. They were just average songs and they just had a certain sound to them. And I think, I think it's where we are today. It's not about the great song. It's just about it sounds like a certain generation or a certain genre well, that's, of music. That's sad because there's a lot of songs sitting on the shelf that could absolutely that could touch somebody's, you know. Yeah, really. Yeah, I think so too. But I, every now and then you do hear a really good song. Right. Well, speaking and of, I heard, I heard one just the other day, and I, I'm still not sure who wrote it or produced it, but it was a good record. It was Cody Johnson's new record. Right. I think it was, I think uh, Kix Brooks was playing it on his show. And I thought, wow, that's a good song. Speaking of great songs, um, you know, back in this, uh, a few years back, when everybody, was, it seems in country, was getting into this whole Caribbean theme. It seems like everybody had some song about the beach and the Caribbean and right. this kind of whole thing, almost a, a Jimmy Buffett aspect of what they were doing. That was what was popular. And then here you come out with Some Beach. I, yeah. I have, I've always thought that 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 song is genius, yeah. uh, you know. And I tell you what, sir, without knowing that that you were the writer of that, I've t I can tell you I have complimented you so many times over the years because of the cleverness of the lyrics of that song and how much fun it is to listen to. I think that is a a perfect fun song. Oh, so yeah. congratulations on that success. It's just oh, fantastic. 
Well, if you come see my live show, you'll hear a new last verse to that to that song. Okay, oh, okay, we're coming, we're coming. Now you got a new, I mean, you've got a new, fairly new album out that's kind of a beach related, right? Oh uh, yeah, I do. I have one called Somewhere in the Caribbean, and uh, my wife and I had got a little place in the islands, and we go there. You know, when they're not right now, it's a little hard because of COVID, and right. they're scared to death, so they want you to quarantine for like. 10 days or something when you get there it's you know I, I may only have two weeks to go on vacation or right now i mean i'm not retired so i still i still work quite a bit so right. to spend 10 days indoors like this doesn't make any sense to me so i'm with you <laughs> folks we're talking to paul overstreet one of the greatest songwriters of all time y'all have heard his music and i know y'all know who we're talking about go to pauloverstreet.com and uh, follow all the stuff that he's got going on uh so how's the new album how's it coming i mean you're getting out there you're promoting it. you got some bookings and uh, uh well we did we did somewhere in the caribbean and uh now i'm working on this new one i think i'm gonna call it still in the islands right um so i'm just doing the final mixes trying to you know i got probably more than enough songs so i'm just trying to figure out which ones will be on this project once i do that yeah then we'll start doing it but you know we get we got uh you know you know when everybody got shut down we were on the beach in the cayman islands and we just started broadcasting every afternoon and we would play people would request songs and the funny thing is you know you do a whole album of 10 songs you but you have four singles off of it five maybe i was fortunate i had five off a lot of them but um, the other songs you don't play live that much, and then people would request them via you know whatever we were broadcasting on, and I'd go, I don't remember the, that song. <laughs> I remember the song, but I don't remember all the lyrics. I'll go rehearse it tonight, and then tomorrow I'll play it. So and, and so we would do that, but then it started building a. a we built a lot of friends like that. I mean, people all over the world would join in and we could show them a sunset and we could have cocktails. You know, we, I'd have a glass of wine and like a sippy cup or something like that on the beach. And right. With an umbrella. It's a big sippy cup. It's an adult sippy cup. With an umbrella. It's got to have an umbrella. <laughs> yeah. And so anyway, we broadcast doing that. And so it turned into this whole thing for sunsets and songs is kind of what I'm going to be doing this year. I'm going to be playing some theaters and uh, just different places like that. Well, I, I'm looking forward to it. Yep, I'm definitely. Now, you brought, you do stuff on Facebook all the time. I'm always watching the live stuff that you're doing. Oh, yeah. On yeah, we do. And um, we should probably should do a lot more of it. But, you know, you get so busy uh, with all the different things that we do, you know, recording, getting ready to travel and all that stuff. And then you, once you book dates, then you got to put some energy behind that and let everybody know you're coming. And, right. Um, like Scotty Emmerich and I are going to play in Missouri. Uh, at, let me see. We're going to play a theater there. I think it's the 18th February, and I'm going to be in uh, Texas. I'm, I'm going to Conroe, Texas on the 4th. The 3rd, I'm playing do -Si in Houston. The 5th, I'm playing uh, the ISIS Theater in uh, Fort Worth. And then on the 6th, I'm playing Love of Texas. So that's a that's like a it's a lot more work than I'm used to, but but I'm gonna look. For, I'm looking forward to. Oh it. yeah, live shows are the best. I'm gonna ask one more question before we go. Now you're doing your studio mix. Do you act? Do you are you do you have a studio at home now, or do you have to go out and do? Yeah, that? yeah. I'm sitting here right now in my studio. This is kind of like uh, I I can't really turn my computer around, but right. it's like I've got a lot of it's just you know BMI awards and things like that, microphones and oh uh, you know just my laptop. Uh, with pro tools and stuff like that. Yeah, it works good. So I kind of do it myself. I I don't do all the engineering. I just do a lot of the vocals and arranging that stuff and then mixing. I love it. Paul, I know you're busy, man, and I appreciate you taking a little time to come and be on the morning dish with us. And uh, like I said, Oh, man, I, I love it. I love it. And uh, you are super Anytime. nice. Anytime. You, Anytime. It's good to talk to you guys. Yeah. Hey, pleasure talking to you, We'll sir. try to get you back on. And like I said, I do appreciate you. Go to Paul, uh, pauloverstreet.com. I guess that's right, pauloverstreet.com. Uh, yeah, Paul Overstreet Music Facebook. pauloverstreet.com uh, is our, our website. And uh, – you can find us in those places and join us on Facebook if you will. And then it won't, that way you can participate. We do a live thing or something. You can criticize me and all that, all the good stuff goes along with it. 
Well, it's been an honor, man, to get to talk to somebody that I've listened to so much and appreciate all of your country music and your inspirational gospel stuff that you got out there. I mean, you got so much stuff. And uh, like I said, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate all of your help. And, and uh, man, I'm going to send you, I'm going to get your stuff. I'll send you some of this new material I'm working on. Hey. I'm also doing a new country record, too. I have a, country, a group of new country songs. And then I have a song of re-records of the old hits and things like that. So I'll send all that stuff to you. All right, man. I appreciate you. You take care. Okay, see you. Thank you for spending a little time with us. And remember, you can tune in every morning at WJULradio.com at 8 a.m. Eastern. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook, The Morning Dish.